In this Blender video, I'm going to demonstrate how to make this scroll with a video on the paper surface. I'll be using Blender version 2.82a. To save time, I've already created one of the scroll handles and the floor. The handle is a mesh cylinder object rotated 90 degrees on the x-axis with these dimensions. The floor is a mesh plane located at the origin with these dimensions. After adding these objects, hide them to keep them out of the way until later. To create the paper for the scroll, we're going to make a spiral curve and then conform the mesh plane to the spiral shape. So from the Edit menu, select Preferences and then click Add-ons. In the drop-down menu, select Add Curve and then enable Add Curve Extra Objects. This will add new curve objects that will allow us to easily make a spiral curve. To get a good view of the curve that we'll be adding, press 7 on the number pad for top view. To add the curve, press Shift A and select Curve, then Curve Spirals, then Archimedean. Now open the Adjust Last Operation section to display the settings for the spiral. Set the Radius Growth to 1 and the Number of Turns to 3. Now we're going to rotate the spiral, so press R, then Y, then 90, then Enter. Rotate it again by pressing R, then Z, then minus 90, then Enter. Now press 1 on the number pad for front view. Next we're going to duplicate the spiral and then flip it over. So to duplicate it, press Shift D, then X, then 8, then Enter. Then rotate it by pressing R, then Z, then 180, then Enter. Now we'll join the two spirals together. So select the two end points and press F to connect them. Next we'll scale it and move it into position. So press A to select all and then scale it by pressing S, then 0 .05, then Enter. Then press G to move and move it to the center. I'm going to press the period key on the number pad to zoom in. Then press G again to move and move it to the center with the bottom of the spiral resting on the red center line. The red center line is also where the floor is located. Now press 7 on the number pad for top view. Then move it by pressing G, then Y, then center it on the red line again and press Enter. Now tab into object mode. Next we'll add the paper for the scroll. So press Shift A and add a mesh plane. Then tab into edit mode. Now scale it on the x-axis by pressing S, then X, then 2, then Enter. A little later, we're going to be using cloth physics for this paper, so we need to subdivide it to allow it to bend. Since it's longer on the x-axis than it is on the y-axis, we're going to add twice as many cuts to the x-axis. To do that, press Alt-A to deselect all. Then switch to Edge Select mode and select only the front and back edges. Now right-click and select Subdivide. Set the number of cuts to 40. Next, press Alt-A to deselect all and then select all the edges except the front and back edges. Now right-click and select Subdivide. Set the number of cuts to 20. Now tab back into object mode. We're ready to conform the paper to the spiral shape, so switch to the Modifier tab and add a Curve Modifier. Make sure that the x-axis is selected and then set the object to the spiral that we created. Next we'll move the paper into position, so press 1 on the number pad for front view. To be able to see the paper from this angle, press Z and switch to wireframe view. Next, move the paper by pressing G, then X, then move the paper until both sides are even, then left click. We don't need to see the spiral anymore, so you can hide it. Next, unhide the scroll handle and select it. Then press G to move and move it to the center of one of the paper spirals. A little later, we'll put a duplicate of this handle on the other side, but first we're going to set up collision physics for it. 
This will allow it to interact with the paper. So switch to the Physics tab and click the Collision button. In the Soft Body and Cloth section, reduce the thickness outer value to 0.001. This will allow the paper to get close to the handle. Now duplicate the handle and drag it on the x-axis by pressing Shift-D, then X, then drag it to the other side and left-click. I'm going to switch to Solid View. Next we're going to set up cloth physics for the paper. So select the paper and click the cloth button. Set the quality steps to 10 to prevent the handles from tearing through the paper. Now open the Collision section and enable Self-Collision so that the paper will interact with itself. Next we're going to make the paper smooth, so switch to the Modifier tab and add a Subdivision Surface Modifier. Set both the Render and Viewport values to 2. Then right-click the paper and select Shade Smooth. The order of these modifiers is important. Make sure that the Subdivision Surface Modifier comes after the Cloth Modifier. Next, I'm going to unhide the floor. To prevent the paper from dropping through the floor, select the floor, switch to the Physics tab, and click the Collision button. In the Soft Body and Cloth section, set the thickness outer value to 0.001 so that the paper will look like it's resting on the floor. If this value is too large, then the paper will look like it's floating above the floor. Now switch to the Object tab and set the Z location value to minus 0.01 so that the floor will start out below the paper. Next, let's set up the animation. If I press the play button, you can see the paper drop onto the handles and the floor. This is what I want it to look like at the beginning of the animation. So let's use frame 20 as the beginning of the animation by setting the start value to 20. The animation will run for 200 frames, so set the end value to 220. Next, we'll set some keyframes for the handles. So make sure the frame number is set to 20. Then select the right handle, press I, and select Location, Rotation. Now select the left handle, press I, and select Location, Rotation. Next, move to frame 100. Then move the handle on the X axis by pressing G, then X, then minus 1.2, then Enter. We also want the handle to rotate, so set the Y rotation value to minus 360. Then press I and select Location, Rotation. Now select the right handle. Move it by pressing G, then X, then 1.2, then Enter. Set the Y rotation value to 360. Then press I and select Location, Rotation. Next, we're going to bake the cloth simulation. So select the paper, switch to the Physics tab, and open the Cache section. Our animation ends at frame 220, so set the Simulation End value to 220. Then click the Bake button. I'll pause the video until it's done. It's done baking. If you need to make any changes after baking, you can click the Delete Bake button, make your changes, and then bake it again. To see what this looks like, I'll set the frame number to the beginning and press Play. The handles move until frame 100 and then stop. Next, let's set up the material for the paper and add a video to it. So switch to the Material tab and click the New button. Now switch to the Shading Workspace. I'll switch to Rendered View so that we can see the changes as they're made. Now let's give the paper some texture. So press Shift A and select Vector and then Displacement. Connect it to the Displacement input. Then press Shift A and select Texture and then Image Texture. Connect it to the Height input. Then click the Open button and select whatever image that you want to use for the texture. I'm going to use this image of cracked asphalt. Now set the scale value. A value of 0.1 works well with this image. I think that this image gives the paper a nice texture. 
Now let's add a video to the surface of the paper. So press Shift A and select Texture and then Image Texture. With this node, we can select a video even though this is an image texture. So click the Open button and select a video that you want to use. I'm going to use this video. I made an animation of a robot in a previous tutorial. I then modified the rendered animation video to look kind of like a pencil or pen drawing, and this is what I ended up with. I wanted the video to look like it was drawn onto the paper, but this is not a requirement. Here is an example of a completely different type of video, and it looks good too. After selecting a video, set the frames value to the number of frames that you want to play. I'm going to set it to 200. I don't want the video to start playing until frame 20, so set the start frame value to 20. Now connect this node to the base color input. You can see the video image on the surface of the paper, but you'll notice that it's on both the front and back of the paper. To prevent it from being visible on the back, we're going to add two more nodes. So press Shift A and select Color, then Mix RGB. Drop it on the input to the principled shader. Now press Shift A and select Input and then Geometry. Connect the back facing output to the factor input. Now the video image is on the front of the paper and this color is on the back. I'm going to change the backside color to a hex value of D0, C0, B0. I'll switch back to the layout workspace, then press 0 on the number pad for camera view, and then switch to rendered view. I previously set up the camera view and the lighting. If you want to duplicate what I've done, then you can use these location and rotation values for the camera. And here are the location values for the light source along with the power and size settings. After rendering the project using the Cycles render engine with 32 render samples, it looks like this. If you don't know how to render an animation, then you can watch my video on that topic. I'll put a link to it in the video description. Well that concludes this video. Thanks for watching and please subscribe and leave a comment.